So in this video, we're going to talk about liver cirrhosis. I have a video that looks actually at the complications of cirrhosis, which includes, uh, you know, the portal hypertension, ascites, hepatopulmonary syndrome, amongst many other things. We will mainly look at, um, in this video, the signs and symptoms, the etiology, the pathophysiology, and the investigations and treatment for cirrhosis. So cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is a late stage progressive hepatic fibrosis characterized by destruction of the hepatic architecture and formation of regenerative nodules. So here we have a normal healthy liver um, and draining into um, the liver is the portal vein. Now the portal vein is what the GIT veins essentially drain into. So all those nutrients absorbed by the gut, by the GIT, it will drain or it will pass through the liver through the portal vein. So here is a person with liver cirrhosis. A cirrhotic liver, we get fibrosis and nodule formation. And the portal vein, which under normal conditions um, actually you know, drain blood into the liver, the draining is not effective because of the fibrosis. Of, of the liver and so there is backflow um, due to the buildup of pressure here. So what causes this progression from a normal liver to a cirrhotic liver which is an irreversible progression? Well common causes of liver cirrhosis include chronic viral hepatitis, alcoholic liver disease and hematochromatosis. Less common causes include autoimmune hepatitis, medications, Wilson's disease and celiac disease. So signs and symptoms of liver cirrhosis. The neurological signs um, include um, extrexis, I think I pronounced that right, which is the hepatic flap. Um, and then you have head and neck involvement, which is parotid gland swelling. This usually um, in, involves alcohol. Skin findings, you get sp spider nevi, um, which is also known as angiomata, as well as jaundice. Uh, with bilirubin greater than uh, 2 milligrams per deciliter. Chest findings, you can find gynecomastia. Abdominal findings, um, signs and symptoms include hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, ascites, caput medusae, as well as a groove and hyalur, Baumgarten murmur. I hope I pronounced that one right too. Uh, urogenital involvement, uh, men can have testicular atrophy. The extremities, you can have palmar erythema. You can nail changes like clubbing. You can have hypertrophic osteoarthropathy, as well as dupatrous contractures. So those are the, some signs and symptoms associated with cirrhosis. The complications of cirrhosis are a result mainly of portal hypertension, which as we mentioned briefly before is basically due to the fibrosis of the liver. The increase in pressure results in the portal vein um, having a backflow, and this will backflow into the gut associate, like the organs of the, gut, of the GIT. So these complications include, and this in all these complications are not all a result of the portal hypertension, by the way, but it's mainly. So these complications include ascites, hepatic encephalopathy, variceal hemorrhage, uh, bacterial peritonitis, hepatorenal syndrome, portal hypertension, gastropathy, hepatic, hy hepatic hydrothorax, hepatopulmonary syndrome, portopulmonary hypertension, and cirrhotic um, cardiomyopathy. So we looked at the signs and symptoms of liver cirrhosis. We looked at the, some complications, which if you want to learn more about, I have a video on that. And next, let's, I should look at um, the, the progression, I guess, the pathophysiology of um, how liver cells um, just become cirrhotic. So here are your liver cells. You have the blood vessel. And here is your liver, uh, which is I'm just re representing here to be normal. So we're looking at a normal liver. Again, here are your hepatocytes. Now, these are your sinusoidal cells. And so this is your hepatic uh, sinusoid, which is essentially where the portal vein drains into. And the portal vein will then drain, pass through, and form the central vein, drain into the central vein. So you have your stellate cells here. And your stellate cells are very important in the pathogenesis of liver cirrhosis because these stellate cells, they're usually dormant and they're at rest. But in cirrhosis, they are activated, and we'll, we'll talk about it. You also have your Kupfer cells, which are essentially your macrophages of the liver. Now, 
The causes of liver damage we looked at earlier, such as you know, autoimmune hepatitis, Wilson's disease, medication, alcohol, and all these can lead to liver injury, causing hepatocellular necrosis and or apoptosis. As a result, we see these changes in the liver. So we can say this is an advanced stage, which is cirrhosis already. So, you know, the dead cells um, with uh, the, the dead liver cells release damage associated molecular patterns, DAMPs, as well as react, re reactive oxygen species. Now, this will stimulate the Kupfer cells and the stelate cells. The stelate cells, which are dormant, are now activated. The activated stelate cells do a few things, including further stimulating the macrophages, the Kupfer cells, to release cytokine, cytokines, for example, amongst many other things. Also, the stelate cells, when they're activated, they secrete chemokines, such as CCL2, which attract more innate immune cells to the area via the CCL2 receptor. As a result, this is what we see, an accumulation of immune cells, activation of stelate cells, which release many more cytokines, mainly TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, interleukin-1b, and uh, TGF. Okay, let's focus on TGF now. So TGF stands for transforming growth factor. TGF, the transforming growth factor, is released primarily by uh, stelate cells. When it's released by stelate cells, it actually further stimulates more other stelate cells to uh, transform essentially to, be, to become cells known as myofibroblasts. It causes myofibroblast prol proliferation. These myofibroblasts further release the transforming growth factor, which stimulate stelate cells to proliferate and become more myofibroblasts. Now, these fibroblasts are the ones that produce the matrix, the collagen, which leads to the fibrosis of liver, uh, associated with liver cirrhosis. So again, the fibroblasts release the, um, the matrix, which actually um, causes the fibrosis of the liver. Now, going back to the cytokines, the TNF-alpha and the other cytokines attract more neutrophils and T-cells into the area. These T-cells and neutrophils contribute to the inflammation early in liver damage, which will lead to necrosis and eventually, you know, the cirrhosis, the fibrosis. Also, the inflammation, it sort of stimulates the nodule formation because of the liver trying to repair itself. So cirrhosis is the late stage of liver disease, aside from liver failure. But when the liver is, you know, really damaged and the complications are, you know, severe, liver transplantation can be performed. But this in itself is a long process and requires much regulation. Next, let's look at investigations of a person suspected with uh, liver disease. So investigations, liver biopsy is the gold standard, taking a sample of the liver. Number two, you can perform a liver function test. You know, this is your ALT, AST, um, alanine, bilirubin. Three, you can pre perform an ultrasound. Um, so you, here you're looking at liver architecture. Four, you can perform a metabolic breath test. This is to assess functional reserve of the liver rather than the structure. Five, you can perform a hepatic venous pressure gradient. And finally, you can also perform a tra um, transient um, elastography. And a transient elastography, it measures liver stiffness, which may um, reflect the fibrosis or edema and inflammation associated with the liver. So, so here you can see the transducer uh, measuring the liver stiffness. Finally, let's look at the management for liver cirrhosis. The main thing to do is um, trying to slow or reserve the progression of liver disease. So 
and this will this actually leads to the second management, which is essentially preventing uh, the superimposed um, insults to the liver. So, you know, vaccinating to in case of um, liver infections, uh, avoiding um, hepatotoxins, which include your alcohol, which is a main cause of liver cirrhosis, one of the main causes, as well as to adjust medications, as certain medications cause the liver to work harder. And third, medication um, adjustment um, and or avoidance, as, as we talked about, is very important. Um, and then four, we, we manage the symptoms and also the laboratory abnormalities associated with liver cirrhosis. So we address the muscle cramps, umbil umbilical hernias, hyponatremia, thrombocytopenia, and the increase in INR, which basically means your body's not clotting properly. It's important to address all these factors associated with liver cirrhosis. Management also inc includes preventing and identifying and treating the complications of cirrhosis, which we talked about earlier, including you know, your per peritonitis, your ascites, hepatopulmonary syndrome, etc. And finally, the last management, of course, would be liver transplantation if all else fails. And of course, if there's a suitable donor. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video on liver cirrhosis.